Hi, this is David at Mash IT. Now tonight's video is going to be a little bit different than planned because we were planning on doing the MacBook Pro 13 versus the new 14 and 16 MacBook Pro. But unfortunately, DHL has just lost our 14 inch MacBook Pro. Now fingers crossed they'll find it and bring it tomorrow. But in the meantime, tonight's video is now going to be the new 16 inch MacBook Pro from 2021 that's released today to be bought versus the 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro that was released last year. Now, Obviously with the new ranges of M series, the M1 Pro and M1 Max, there's going to be an awful lot more power, which we're going to look at in this video. And we're going to be comparing to this 13 inch because there's a massive cost difference uh, between these two models. So we wanted to show you what extra you're getting for your money between these two. Now the 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro that was released last year starts at 1299 pounds in the UK. And for that you get eight gigabyte of RAM and a 256 gigabyte SSD. Now this model that I've got in the studio is actually the 512 gigabytes. So it's eight gigabyte of RAM, 512 gigabyte SSD, and that's 1,499 pounds. Whereas the newly released 16 inch MacBook Pro, this is the base model. Now this is 2,399 pounds. So 900 pounds more than this little 13 inch here. But for that, you're getting the same 512 gigabyte of storage, but 16 gigabyte of RAM. We're getting the newly released M1 Pro chip, which is a 10 core CPU and a 16 core GPU. Now this is only the base model. You can go right up to about four to 5,000 pounds if you're specking this up with the M1 Max, 64 gigabytes of RAM and four to eight terabyte worth of SSD. But for most people, you're not gonna be interested in that. And probably for most people, if you want the 16 inch, the base model is the one that you're gonna buy. So we're gonna take a look around the actual physical aspect and we're gonna take a quick look at some benchmarks to see how these two perform against each other and to see what that extra 900 pounds is gonna buy you. So side by side, you can see there's quite a lot of difference between these two machines. Not only the physical size, because obviously 13 inch is gonna be a lot smaller, but also just the actual, the design of these. But on the 13 inch, you've got the more sort of rounded lid that the, uh, the Macs have been using for the last few years. Whereas the newly designed 16 inch MacBook Pro has a much more old school sort of harder look to it and I have to be honest I'm probably quite old anyway so this maybe it's why it sort of rings a note with me but I absolutely love the look of this new design it is a lot chunkier but because of the way that it feels it doesn't feel any bigger than the previous 16 inch and it actually feels really nice in the hand now if I just put them on top of each other you can see how much difference between the 13 inch m1 and the actual 16 inch m1 it's a massive amount of difference so if you're somebody that's going to be carrying your laptop all day every day, I would say you're probably going to be wanting the 13 inch or maybe, you know, the 14 inch, which we're going to be looking at hopefully tomorrow or the day after. Whereas the 16 inch, obviously this is going to be more for your power users that needs that much, much bigger screen real estate. So not only is it a lot deeper and wider, you can see that there's quite a lot of extra thickness that they've put into this year's model as well. We're going to look at the cooling solution, but I'm expecting that to be pretty good considering the components we've got in here. Now with the 13 inch, all we get is two USB-C's and a headset jack. That's it, that's all you're getting. Whereas Apple have finally brought us back a few ports. So if we look around on the left side of the laptop, we've got the MagSafe, we've got two Thunderbolt 4 ports and the headset jack. And if I spin it around, we've got a full-size SD card slot, another Thunderbolt 4 and an HDMI 2 port. It's not a bad selection of ports at all. And it's like Apple have finally started listening to its consumers. The one thing I would have absolutely loved is an old school USB 3. So I've got still so many peripherals, like mouse dongles and other bits and pieces, I still plug in onto USB. I would have loved that. But this is a fantastic compromise that we've got here from Apple. And I never thought I'd even see this, to be honest. This is, this is really great. Another thing that people have been talking about is the feet. So if I just whiz it over. So looking between the two laptops, you can see that Apple have redesigned the feet over the last previous few years. Before, they've been very svelte and hardly lift the MacBook off the table at all. Whereas this year, as you can see, they're actually a fair bit higher, lifting the laptop up a little bit more, giving it a little bit more room to breathe. Now this, to me, is not something that I've ever noticed or been bothered about, but a lot of people are talking about it. But if you're used to using Windows laptops, this is still incredibly slim. Most Windows laptops stick out five mil plus. So, Something that's never bothered me, but I think they actually look quite nice. And lastly, we've actually got the engraved MacBook Pro written in the bottom of the machine now. Again, it's a nice touch. Right, so let's open them up and take a look inside. Now on first glance, when you're looking at these two, 
you know, you're just seeing the like previous 16 inch versus the 13 inch, but there's been quite a few changes on the inside this year over the previous 16 inch. So looking at them side by side, both have got the huge track pads and the 16 inch has got the absolutely enormous track pad as per last year. And it is a fantastic track pad to use, but equally I've never found the 13 inch too small. So happy with either of those two. And they are the class leading force touch track pads that we've been using for so long now and everyone absolutely loves. Now the keyboard, that's where we're getting some changes this year. Firstly, you'll notice that the cutout is now black on the 16 inch as opposed to the silver on the old M113 inch, or older I should say. Now, I actually, I think I prefer the look of the silver. I don't know, it's just more iconic Apple, but this is great still. I've been happy with it for my time using this machine. And apparently it's supposed to make the keys sort of, you know, especially when they're backlit, sort of pop out a bit more. Either way, both absolutely fantastic keyboards. The key feel seems very similar between the two. I don't feel like this feels any different. They said it's got more of a mechanical feel to it. I disagree. It's a very good keyboard, but it just does feel like a standard Apple keyboard, like a magic keyboard. But the other biggest difference, pretty obvious if you're looking at here, is at the top we've got full size or full height function keys finally. Whereas the MacBook Pro 13 inch has the horrible touch bar. Now if you've watched my previous Mac videos, you'll know I've never liked the touch bar. It's always been such a gimmick to me. I've only found one or two very minor uses for it and most of the time I'm just annoyed by it. They're using extra sort of, you know, steps just to do the standard things I want, like adjusting the brightness of the volume. Now we've got the standard function keys. I'm so pleased to have this back. But Apple have changed some of the actual functions themselves. We've no longer got the launcher key, uh, but we've now got the search bar key. And we've also got a microphone button now as well. Uh, and there's also a dedicated sleep button. I'm not quite sure. I don't think that's something that I would particularly ask for, but it is there. We've got our usual multimedia keys. And then finally, right at the end, you see this quite large fingerprint sensor. And you notice it's got like a recessed circle in it this year, as opposed to just, this is more of a sort of a glossy sort of feel. I have to be honest, I prefer the old look of the uh, fingerprint reader, but this has been working brilliantly, so I can't complain. Now, as we move up to the screens, this is obviously the next biggest difference. Now, yes, straight away, we've got 13 inch to a 16 inch screen, and all the things that are inherent to that, you've obviously got more real estate with the 16 inch, higher DPI, uh, you can fit more on the screen but the 13 inch is obviously a lot more portable. It's a lot easier to use this machine on your lap, but that isn't where the actual differences end. With this year's M1 Pro 16 inch and 14 inch, we've got a number of improvements in the screen. Firstly, we've got ProMotion 120 Hertz, which is something I'm gonna be looking at. So far, I haven't really noticed it in day-to-day -day use, but I'm gonna pop some games and other bits and pieces to see if I can really notice a difference. But the other main difference is the fact that we've finally got mini LED on this screen. And I can tell you just using this so far for the day, I have been so blown away by the screen. It is absolutely incredible. And that's not to say that the M1 screen is bad. I've been using this for the last year now as my daily driver for sort of writing scripts, uh, basic general work, a little bit of video editing. And this screen has been absolutely brilliant anyway. So if you'd never seen the 16 inch screen, you'd be really happy with the 13 inch. And if you are obviously looking to save that money, this is a brilliant screen anyway. But having used this mini LED screen, I don't think I would want to necessarily go back to the 13 inch. It is amazing. And also talking about the screen, uh, I'm sure you'll have heard about this by now, but we have got the notch where the webcam is cut out of part of the actual main display. This isn't something that'll ever bother me, I'm sure, because just because of the way Mac OS works, because you've got all the menu bar at the top, it's kind of always been a bit of dead space previously, like on the 13 inch, you're actually losing some real estate at the top where you've got your menu bar. Well now, they've pushed that up into the sort of top bezel and therefore that's now perfectly usable space giving you more real estate on the screen. And as you can see on this 16 inch screen, we've got smaller bezels. They had improved it with the uh, older 16 and 13 inch MacBook Pro, but they've improved it again, giving us even narrower bezels and making this laptop look a lot more modern. This is what the webcam and the microphones look and sound like on the M1 MacBook Pro 13. And this is what the webcam and the microphones look and sound like on the 1080p camera on the new MacBook Pro 16. And lastly, we're gonna check the speakers between these two models. So this is the speakers at 50% volume on the MacBook Pro 13.
Now 50% on the MacBook Pro. Eighty percent on the Mac thirteen. And then eighty on the sixteen. So you can clearly hear there that it's like in a different league on the 16. The sound on these speakers is phenomenal. For a laptop, it's absolutely incredible. So let's have a quick look at the performance of these machines in this comparison. We're going to start off with a bit of Cinebench. Now I ran R23 on both of these machines. As expected, the 16-inch scored a lot higher because it has a 10-core CPU, eight of which are the high-performance cores, against the eight-core CPU of four of which are high-performance cores on the 13. So we're talking just over 12,000 points on the 16, and we're talking 7,800 points on the 13. So a nice increase in multi-threaded performance. But something else I want to talk about, which a lot of people don't necessarily mention, is the fact that the fan noise. I was expecting the 16 to really sort of whir up and you know be noticeable using this 10-core CPU on this test. But in actual fact, the 13-inch fan spun up after about four minutes of the R23 test and became quite audible throughout the whole 10 minutes of the R23 test with full load on the CPU, the fan didn't spin up to an audible level on the 16. I even ran it a second time, once on mains and once on battery, just to see if it made any difference. And, it, and neither time did the fan spin up to an audible level, which is something that's absolutely amazed me. And it just shows you, obviously making it slightly thicker, what a great job Apple have done with a the thermal solution on this laptop. Another point to note, having tested it in typical Apple style, both of these machines give you full performance on the power supply and on battery. That's something I've always loved about Apple. You can use these on your lap, on battery, and still do some heavy performance work. On the Geekbench 5 CPU test for both of these machines, now because the actual CPUs are clocked at similar speeds, the actual single core score was brilliant on both these machines. The 13 inch was 1747 whereas the 16 inch was 1775, so only a marginal lead on single threaded performance. But what this basically means is in day to day performance, these both feel incredibly snappy. Now again, when it comes to the multi-core score, like Cinebench R23, the 13 inch scored 7700, whereas the 16 inch scored 12,500. So as we'd expect, being those extra high performance cores, you're getting much greater performance in these machines. Now I talked about fans, also want to talk about heat. Both of these uh, machines stayed pretty cool to the touch under full load, like your multiple tests on Cinebench R23 and Geekbench. But the actual 16 inch, the keyboard started to get warm, whereas the actual 13 inch stayed cool to the touch without all of these tests. So although it does get a little bit noisier, it is actually cooler. But this only got warm didn't ever get hot, so if you've ever tried like an old MacBook or a gaming laptop where the keywords actually get roasting hot, we didn't find that, it was just warm on this machine. So moving on to the metal portion of Geekbench 5, which tests the actual GPUs in both of these machines, it's pretty much as I was expecting. The 13 inch with its eight core GPU scored 21,498, whereas the 16 inch with its 16 core GPU scored 4,144. So almost double where you've obviously got double the actual GPU cores, so pretty much as expected. But when I moved into a couple of games, the results weren't quite as clear cut. Now again, uh, gaming on a Mac is never gonna be its strong suit, and a lot of these games are still running Rosetta to convert the sort of the old x86 code into ARM. But we just fired up the Warhammer Total War benchmark, and the 13 inch on 1200p ultra graphics scored 23.2 frames per second, and the 16 inch at the same resolution, 1200p, and ultra graphics scored 31.3 frames per second. So it is a lot better than the 13 inch, but it isn't double in this case. So that did get me a little bit concerned. So I then fired up Rise of the Tomb Raider, which is, I think, a better port of a game from Windows over to Mac. And in that benchmark, we scored 24 frames per second on the 13 inch. And then again, this is at 1200p. And the 16 inch, we scored 52 frames per second. So actually more than double the performance on the 16 inch over the 13. 
Now we will be looking at more games in depth and we will also be looking at video rendering and other 3D applications in greater detail later on to see how they compare. Uh, but this is obviously just a first day sort of impression so we can't go too deep. But ultimately the 16 inch is a lovely bump up in performance over the 13 inch. And of course, if you are a real power user, you've also got the M1 Pro Max, which doubles the GPU cores again to 32, uh, and giving you an even more graphics grunt on these 16 inch machines. So not only are we looking at performance, I wanna just quickly talk about battery life. Now again, this is early days. We haven't had a lot of time with these machines yet. I've always been so incredibly impressed with the battery life on my M1 Map Pro, which was that, and the lack of fan noise, one of the things that really sold it for me when it was released. So just to do some quick battery tests, I ran YouTube at 50% brightness on both these machines, 50% volume, streaming over wireless. And surprisingly, in this test, both of them use about 4% battery per hour, giving them both incredible battery life for just video watching. Now, from just generally using these machines in heavier tasks like Cinebench and other benchmarks, I did notice that the battery does deplete faster in the 16 inch but you've got to bear in mind that obviously you've got a lot more cores you know, using that sort of battery power. But we will be testing this with a watt meter and a few other bits and pieces, so stay tuned for those videos. So as I mentioned when I talked about the ports earlier on, we've got MagSafe on the new model. So let's have a quick look at the chargers. The original M1 MacBook Pro 13 from last year, this was obviously charged via USB-C like they've been doing since uh, 2016. So we got a 61 watt power adapter with the 13 inch it's nice and compact and your USB-C cable I've been quite happily enjoying that but I did miss the MagSafe I have to be honest so now with 16 inch by default you get 140 watt GAN speed charger and that comes with USB-C into the actual charger itself over to MagSafe good old MagSafe I don't know anybody that wanted this removed, so I'm so pleased to have it back. This is obviously great. So not only does it uh, snap away from the laptop if you yank or kick the actual power cord or laptop, but you've also got a little light on there which actually lights up to show you whether you're charging or charge. And that's something I always enjoyed about the old MagSafe. But the good thing with these machines is, being that they are USB-C, you can plug a USB-C charger into these laptops still, and it will charge, but you won't get the high speed charging that you do with the 140 watt and MagSafe cable. But as always with Apple, in a pinch, you can use your 61 watt old chargers with your new 16 inch MacBook Pro as normal. So there we have it. There's our sort of uh, first day overview of the new 16 inch and comparing it to last year's M1 MacBook Pro 13. Now, as you can see, there's an incredible price difference from the base 13 inch to the base 16 inch. This is a pro machine and therefore the price tag does come with that. For most people, I think you are better off picking up a 13 inch if you are a casual user. But if you've got the money to spend, this laptop is better in pretty much every way other than portability. And if portability is the key, we will be looking at the 14 very soon and comparing it with the 13 inch. With this machine, you get better ports, an incredible screen with more screen real estate. You're getting ProMotion, 120 frames per second. You're getting a better webcam, better speakers, incredible battery life and incredible performance. This really is an absolutely fantastic package. Now, I was absolutely blown away last year when I picked up this M1 MacBook Pro. We got in the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro to test. Gary kept the Air, I kept the Pro. I think I drew the short straw because I think the Air was a better model for last year. But this year's range has just blown me away again. They've put right a lot of the things I moaned about with the old Pro, such as the lack of ports, the touch bar strip, obviously with the Intel version, the heat and the fan noise, that has all now been resolved and giving you as well incredible performance with these new chips. I think, you know, Apple really have now put themselves well out ahead of most Windows laptops in the workspace. This is never gonna replace a gaming laptop, so if gaming is your thing, you know, I think you can probably get by on this for a lot of the sort of Mac titles, and maybe we'll try looking at Parallels as well, but it's not a gaming laptop, and you're gonna want a game laptop for that rather than this if that's your jam. But overall, I'm incredibly impressed with this. My biggest dilemma now is gonna be, am I gonna keep the 16 or the 14? So I'm really looking forward to getting that 14 inch tomorrow, hopefully tomorrow, so I can compare the two of these and see which one I'm gonna keep for myself. Well, as usual, any questions or any thoughts, pop them in the comments section down below. If you're not subscribed, please do so. We've got plenty more videos coming on these machines. And lastly, thanks for watching.